I can't fuck with no anybody. Nah, nigga, you, you just saying it. Help yourself. They're not happy with me. Darker truth. Thank you to the darker truth for letting me cook this bitch. Thank you so much. And reinformed of your own spiritual science about your own deities and your own gods that look like you that walked like you, that talked like you. You, Where you have your own spiritual books, where not another race was supposed to come and bring you a book. This is the book you're supposed to read. This is the Bible, this is the Torah, this is the Quran. The, the Arabs brought the Quran. The Mesopotamians or the Israelites, the Jews brought these Torahs, brought these books to you. Were not yours if they were brought to you. They were foreign if, they, if you had to convert. See, so the problem is that we we've been we've we've we still perpetrating their doctrine. You were supposed to have the information that you needed for your own development, so you can rule in this new cycle, which is the Aquarian age. And everyone knows that there, this there's a shift in consciousness. Why do you think so many different questions are popping up? Why do you think this room is so popular with the amount of information? Because you're talking about topics that the devil has not introduced to you, because he can't. You were here before him. So you're reawakening. You just have the, the seed is in you, but you just have to get the complete spiritual science to unlock the, your DNA. And in your DNA, which uh, you, you've you been programmed with a certain amount of DNA from your bloodline, from your ancestors, from your royal bloodline, you all have, right, is the deity of uh, the, the genes of the gods that were late in that, that were asleep. And they knew that at this particular time, a certain amount of information had to reach your ears, which was had de de dealt with nothing but facts, not beliefs. Belief systems were old, were the older doctrines. That was the old under when people six thousand years ago that old cycle, right, where you had to believe because you didn't have it, it, access to the knowledge. So you had to believe what was given to you. You had to believe in uh, a heaven and the sky and, and this white man sitting on the cloud and creating, you know, worlds and snapping his finger and right with no face, long beard, white robe, sitting, watching things happen. You had to believe that, that angels had wings, right? Because you didn't know space didn't have air. But now that you know that there's no air in space, you realize how ridiculous it is to have wings on an angel when how are you flying if there's no atmosphere? So they, they knew that there would be a group of beings that would come after a certain time where the religious doctrines or beliefs would fall away. So what would, what would be there to replace it? The, the master teacher, Dr. Malachi York, writing these books was introducing the knowledge for you all to have so when your time did come to rule, you'd be in fit form. Your minds will be liberated. You're physically liberated. So you, you know, for the most part, we physically can go different places, travel the world, et cetera. But what about the mind being liberated? And that was the last approach. And so because we're moving into this age of Aquarius, which is the age of air, why is it called air, right? It's because everything is ether now. Everything is wireless. Now, everything is cordless. Before uh, maybe 1990, everything had you know had, you had to plug every everything in. You had to plug in the charger. You had to plug in speakers. You had to plug in the internet. Right now, everything is wireless because everything is moving ether from mind to mind. So your minds had to be advanced, right? But in that advancement, you had to have a certain doctrine that wouldn't allow you to lean on his ghost ghost spell or gospels to lean on his uh, lords or Jehovah's or laws and lean on him for help or pray to his gods for assistance, right? When all they were giving you was abuse. You didn't know. You just was a spiritual person. You thought this was the way, right? But you were supposed to have this knowledge. And this was the knowledge that Dr. Malachi Z.K. York had brought. This is why they were so afraid they had to get him out the way. He was speaking about extraterrestrials in 1990. We have books on the Anunnaki, several books, uh, the Anunnaki and Nibiru, Pl Mission Earth, Man from Planet Risk. This was a series of extraterrestrial books that was explaining what the government was covering up or thought he could cover up for so long. Now they just can't, they have to let it out. They can't, you, you, our children are not accepting that uh, the devil is a, a white, uh, a guy with a pitchfork and a tail.
because they don't see this character. They see human devils. They see people doing devilishment. They don't see a white man floating around in the sky with a halo. They don't. They, they have telescopes that are looking far into the deep corners of the universe, and they haven't found this place you call heaven, right? And so science has proven that life started billions of years ago on the planet. They just had an article the other day about the moon actually being a part of the earth. This was a doctrine that was taught about the Nibiru hitting the planet and causing it to split in the earth, the moon forming after its collision. This is why it still pulls on the waters of earth because it was a once a part of earth. It, it affects the tides. It's now desolate. It has craters, but they, they just are confirming, Chinese scientists are confirming these phenomena. And so they knew that the age of tech, this age, your minds would awaken to such a degree that none of the religious doctrines that they placed on you could control you any longer. And that's what they feared. And they knew that, okay, they had to do anything they could to try to get Dr. Malachi York out the way because he already had brought the, the hip hop community to get together. He had already brought the conscious community together. And they were afraid that if the, the religious world collapsed, once this terroristic Islamic doctrines collapsed, and I'm not talking about the Sunni black Muslims in America, I'm not talking about them, they're converts. They have no control. So all the black brothers and sisters, I love you all, but if you converted to Islam, I'm not talking about you. The Arabs control Islam. The Arabs control the money. The Arabs control the oil. They controlled and enslaved for 1300 years our people because they teach in Islam that you can have slaves and they teach that on the last day, your sins will turn your face black. It's a lot of racism in Islam. You just don't know it because you're not a part of that world. They knew that if that once Judaism uh, collapsed from the minds of our people, when you realize, how am I from Mesopotamia? When you look at Abraham and you say, oh, we're all from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, how when Abraham was from Babylon? He's from Mesopotamia, Earl of Chaldees. That's not Africa. That's not a black, that's literally uh, Persian. That's a Mesopotamian, right? And so I, they say, well, Jacob name is changed to Israel. Israel is, is a name change. It's not a genetic nationality. So no black people can be of that seed because there is literally no genetics that tie you into the name Israel. Israel means El will prevail. That doesn't mean because his name was changed that our entire genetic bloodline changes from who we are. It just that doesn't make sense. So they knew that one day you would find out that was BS. They knew that one day you'd realize, hey, Christianity, this Caucasian Christ, right? He was actually taught in Egypt. He was? Yes. He was sent to Egypt because Herod was going to kill him. And he was raised in Egypt. And they have his name written in Egypt as Horus. And the Egyptians had a doctrine. What doctrine is that? That we are all gods. Is that what Jesus, Yahshua meant? In John's 10, 40, 34, when he said, we're all gods. So what doctrine teaches you that you're gods? Right? If he says, we're all gods, children of the most high, then that means you would wake up to be gods again. So they realize they can't teach that old Christianity to you any longer. So what, was, what doctrine are we supposed to learn? What was given to us by birth? That's what was being taught. And they were afraid of that. So the moment you begin to teach, that doctrine to awaken the people, then they're going to come after you. And he told us that. He said, but I'm coming here to herald in the coming of the Messiah. That's, that's a doctrine that has not changed. Dr. Malachi York taught that since the 70s, that he was here to prepare you all for the coming of your Messiah, your Christ. I'm not your Messiah. I'm not talking about this Caucasian image, the white boy coming out. No because they can't help you. You have one and he's black, he's an African, he's bred and born and raised amongst you all. And that's who you have, that's, that, this is the day and time that we're in. And because, that, because you all are now awakening, the, 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 the advice, back to your question, sis, is to give them back everything. You have to start over. You have to realize, okay, maybe I was duped. We're not responsible for these books. People come and defend the Bible, the Quran, it's fine, but you're not responsible for putting those books together. 
You don't have to kill each other over the argument of the what, book of John, of Hebrew. They, they, don't, they don't even have the originals of these books. It would be easy if someone would come forth and say, hey, let me give you the original so we can make the comparison. Show me an original Torah that was written by the finger of God. I need to see that. Show me the Quran written or read by Allah given to Muhammad. And I don't need to hear the imams. I don't need to hear these clubhouse preachers and reverends. Or I don't need to hear that. Show me the original book. Can you? No, you can't show me the book. So what are you arguing over? If you don't have an original, you can't compare the words to each to the text. You have a translation, but you're not responsible for the translation. So you can't say that this is not what it's supposed to say because you have no original to compare it to. You have an oldest, but that's not the original and it's not sufficient. So they knew that at some point you would be asking these type of questions. And the master teacher had prepared us at a very young age to be able to address these questions because our doctrine right was the only doctrinal information that would allow questions no other religious you can can't go into a church on sunday and ask a preacher a question because if you ask him how did evil come to the planet because that's everyone's back to this original uh what's what's our right the, our, our likes the things that we can agree on we all can agree evil is the problem on the planet right yes muslims christians and jews will say yes evil is the problem all right for the sake of argument yes so who's responsible for that that that's the question because whoever's responsible should be responsible for removing it not punishing your children for and partaking of it because it's we already know that we were created according to the as, as not as smart as the devil you already said the devil was in heaven with god and he was smarter than all the angels and more cunning. So you already made him more intelligent than everyone else. So human beings are not the problem when it comes to evil. If you, if who brought that evil, the mind of evil, the thoughts of evil, the crimes, the atrocities, the murders, the thought of debauchery, the ch who brought that to the planet? And you will see it right in Genesis 2, 9. It says this Lord, planted a tree of knowledge of good and evil so someone lied who placed evil what was the purpose of bringing it to the planet if your purpose is to not have evil and to save your children so they play these games these religious games and plays with our minds and now we all confuse arguing amongst each other and we can't get our stuff together because we still arguing over books that we can't confirm so my advice is to give it back start over and let's get to the base of our spiritual science that works for us if it's not working for us give it back if you're not it, you, you're dialing the wrong number right you if you keep dialing the wrong number. how many days you're going to dial the wrong number if you're not getting the answer that's the same thing with this with, with the give it we have to give it back and start over that's my advice and i will i will, I will say that again to anybody we have to give it back to him and and deal with us as a people love that love that spiel um and i agree i feel like the the more that we find out about a lot of existential truths uh regarding who we are um the more that we find that stuff out right they try to label us conspiracy you know conspiracies and just all these different types of things um but i did want to ask you you know because you're kind of you know we're already going towards that <clears throat> and alluding towards that, which is, um, you know, do you care to to speak on, uh, you know, any of those hangups that those consequential hangups that Dr. York faced? Um, oh, the hard questions. Specific, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, right. I'm okay with it. I'm so, okay with it. Ask them. Yeah, sure. Yeah, whatever, whatever yeah. people want to know. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, of those legal allegations. Did she go out? I did. Sorry about that. Okay. So the no, question no is, do you care to speak on any legal of the legal allegations, charges against your fathers? Um, there's a few things, right, that, that we know. 
right? That uh, it, it is said he burned and beat a five-year-old boy in his care. There's also claims of uh, conning his members out of money. And namely, more specifically, just we want clar clarity on this, right? Was, was did your father, uh, was he practicing um, sexually abusing children? Uh, what are what are your thoughts on these allegations? I know they're pretty chilling, pretty gruesome, uh, but we we want to know, right? You no, know it's, it's, we want to hear you speak good. your piece on this. Are these things true? Okay, so I'm glad you asked, and these are the hard questions that you know twenty last twenty two years I, I, I address very very clearly, not because of um, speculation, right? Not because um, just because okay that's my father and i feel like i need to defend him and i you know i will i'll speak against the facts no i was i was there from the very beginning right um actually i was one of the ones who um went to testify on his behalf As a matter of fact i warned him about the case because i learned about the conspiracy in 2002 in january right I learned that there was there was a group of people who were trying to create a case against them, right? So this was not, this is, and, and I walked through that. We, we hired attorneys. I walked through the entire trial. I helped down in Brunswick, Georgia. I was living on the land. I was raised in a community amongst the so-called, the alleged victims that, 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 that they, they thought or claimed, people claimed were children. It's 20 years, so the story then got twisted and turned so many different times. So I'm glad that I'm able to still be here and 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 set the record straight from the from the, from day one, and so let me let me just establish five uh, fundamental facts that's um, that's that that's clear. And a matter of fact, in front of me, I have uh, about seven recantments from people who had testified that, that said later said that I was I was coerced, I was pro, um, I was. Uh, threatened that if I didn't make these stories up, I would be placed in jail. I had one had a, a murder charge against him, they, and he was arrested later. He had testified and signed an affidavit. And the reason why I was able to get these affidavits from these um, uh, uh, so-called uh, uh, these alleged victims is because I grew up with them, and that's I know them personally. So I'm not a person speaking from the on the outside, from the outside looking in. I lived on the land from 19 when we purchased it to 1998-99 right and my father was arrested around 2000 and he was arrested may 8th 2002 so anything about the case i can speak to and i've did many interviews worldwide i've been on radio stations television uh it just i did wrote numerous documents articles about the case because i was made aware of the the conspiracy by a one of my brothers, right? Maybe he is. I'm not sure, but he used my Jacob Muhammad. He Yakub Muhammad. He used my father's name, York, right? The York name to burst into the music industry. My father in the '80s was influential. He had a lot of uh, artists that would come to our music industry, music uh, studio in New York and Brooklyn. Redhead Kingpin, for those that might be familiar, Brand Nubian. Uh, Doctor York introduced the word Nubian to America. So Brand Nubian. Um, they 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 picked up the name. You'll see on one of their albums. Thank you, Dr. York, Imam Misa, for all the tea. Dougie Fresh, we used to come to our Queen Latifah, that whole realm of red, black, and green, X Clan, King Son. All of those individuals was coming to Brooklyn to York Studios. It was one of the only uh, black owned distributors and owners of a mass owner of their masters, and he would teach them how to move into the music industry owning their own labels and owning their own publishing and all of the things that the other Caucasian groups wanted to control. He was he was uh, one of the ones, Dr. Yoke was teaching them how to control it on their own. Matter of fact, Jay-Z, Jazzo, when he got his start with those, uh, with, with Jay-Z back in the day in Brooklyn, they used to come to Bushwick. He shot his first video over there at our community. So Jacob, right, who was um, raised in a community, one of my brothers, Raised in Brooklyn, I was raised in Philadelphia community, right? Um, he had a vendetta. My father said he was going to be trouble from very one. He had a vendetta against my father that grew that grew over the years, right? It, it really came, it really flared up in the '90s after he asked, um, and I was there. He asked Baba. We call him Baba for those that 
don't know, right? Uh, for a million dollars to back Little Kim. He actually put out Little Kim with Unentertainment, right? So he put, he asked Dr. York, Baba for a million dollars. Doc, Baba said, no, I can't support this, this woman. I can't support this rapper uh, because I have daughters. This is what his words was. I have daughters, you know that. How could I back a, a girl like this with the type of image that, I, no, I, I can't do that. Jake, Jacob was mad. He just wanted to be involved and break into the music industry some kind of way. As a matter of fact, he he uh, helped form the group Junior Mafia, right? He was close friends with Biggie. Uh, matter of fact, uh, Jake, you might have heard uh, Jake uh, Biggie shout out him on on uh, Ten Crack Commandments when he was like, "My man Jacob said she could cook a steak up." That it was like the tenth command, whatever. That's Jacob York. He was involved. He wanted to push forward in the music industry by using the York name. But he was eventually, um, his his mom had died uh, from an aneurysm and he blamed everything on my father and other things he was blaming on him. So around late ni 1990, early 2000, um, there was people who was on the land. I was there. And just like any community that has spiritual practices and uh, spiritual disciplines, we, 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 we were a thriving community, a thriving city. We had people from all over coming to our uh, Savior's Week, Erica Badu performed there, De La Soul, Nas, all these people, Mob Deep, Prodigy, they were all coming to the land. This is how popular it was. Maybe a lot of people are not aware, if, you, if you're younger than 30, you just may not be aware of this, what, this was all taking place, but it was. And so um, uh, around, let's say 2000, people wanted to uh, explore the world because raised, being raised in a community like that, when you, you lured by the devil, just like any other religious organization, some religious, uh, not necessarily religious, but children at a teenage, don't, you don't have to be religious. A teenager will want to explore the world at an early, think they know the world, think they want to go, they want to go party. All of us at some point wanted to do that. And so they would, they would be, let's say, lured by Jake because he was involved in the music industry. It's like, hey, man, you all want to go to a party? Jacob throwing a party in Atlanta. Hey, let's go. Okay, so Jake and his vendetta, he literally was being investigated. This is a fact, and it's on a documentary. He was being investigated for some crimes he did in New York, right? He was being sued by M the NBA for the Cameron logo, Sex, Drugs, and I think Sports was his album, when he used the gun instead of the basketball. That was all Jacob's involvement, right? So he was being investigated for, for drugs and some other things, some bank, whatever fraud he was doing. And they said basically they needed a bigger fish to fry. This was like the beginning of the hip hop police situation. We all come down to Atlanta, we get our land. Jacob is doing his thing in Atlanta. He comes to the land, comes to uh, um, an act about that, the million dollars, Baba said no, he speeds off, he's mad. He said, I'm gonna make sure, he, he, you know, it was word around, he was trying to threaten Bob and do all, all these things. Now I learned about what they were doing. Now I'm gonna tell you what happened how it all unfolded. They went on a South Beach trip on what is Memorial Day weekend in 2001, right? In Miami. And about 90% of the alleged victims that, that claimed to be went to this party down in South Beach with Jake. He sponsored the trip. It was a big, you know, I think, what is that? Uh, spring break, they partied, orgy, sex, whatever, drugs, whatever else. So that's when he conspires to bring a case against my father. It was on that trip. None of these were children. This is what I, the facts I want to establish. One, there were no children in this case. They used that to emotionally create a, a situation where people will feel in an emotional upheaval the moment they hear the charge. Because it's virtually impossible to shake that type of charge or the idea of you being charged with that, even if you, even when you are innocent, people are like, damn, you got charged with that. You can, all, everyone can identify with a child because you were a child before. And the, the, the society puts a stigma on that, regardless if you found not guilty, it's like, damn, you was charged with that? They're gonna watch, they're gonna feel emotionally attached, void of any facts. And so, this was a plan of the feds. One, they wanted our land. 
because they see it was worth hundreds of millions of dollars, right? They knew the direction it was going to. They knew that that type of charge could be, they, 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 they would create a charge where it would be hearsay. And the reason I know it was hearsay is because I was at the trial. And in the discovery, there was no physical evidence. There was no DNA. There was no pictures. There was no video. It was all hearsay but because they were just creating the stories on the South Beach trip coming back. And the sheriff, the investigating sheriffs, did a story that said, listen, I got a call, Howard Richard Seals, got a call from Jacob and said, he has something he want to tell him. Uh, he think it's important. He want to hear about this, this such and such allegations. So he said, okay, bring them in. It wasn't anything that any alleged victim or the medical or the police, typically when an assault of sexual violence of a minor occurs, there's a, first of all, there's a physical testing that's done at a hospital or at a place. If a police report is done, then they say, okay, this person claims such and such happened. We did an investigation, examination. This is what we found. Anal tearing, vaginal scars, ah, da, 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 DNA, rape kit, et cetera, et cetera. None of that was there. It was just Jacob calling Seals. This is what Richard Seals said verbatim. And I hope one of my brothers put the link up where you can see. He called them verbatim and said, well, I, I want to bring. So he said, okay, bring in one of the young ladies or whoever you got to bring. So he brings in this woman, Abigail Washington. Abigail Washington later recants her entire story and says, Jacob, you will put him up to it. But by listen to this, this is the catch. This was, they came and talked to Howard Seals in 2000, and, uh, 2000. By 2000, no, pardon me, 2001. 2002, Dr. Dr. York was arrested on May 8th. It wasn't until 2004 where they had to repeat the same stories they told the sheriff in 2001. Three years later, this is why they closed the court off in Brunswick. They closed the court off and nobody was allowed in the courtroom, right? I was aware of the conspiracy. So I became a star witness for the defense. I was going so hard for three years by the time trial came, when I needed to present the facts, when I came into the courtroom, the judge sent the jurors out of the box. Literally, because they didn't want them to hear about the conspiracy against Dr. Dr. Malakazi K. York. He learned about it because he heard me doing interviews. And I was like, look, they, they conspired. And the reason our defense attorney, Adrian Patrick, and my father said they didn't want you to speak because then they would have to subpoena Jake, Jacob York, to come and say, did you go on a South Beach trip with these alleged victims, which were all adults? Every, there was adults on the stand. People was like, acting like, oh, there was children. It was, and first of all, there was no child molestation charges. The feds don't have child molestation charges. It was transportation across state lines. Right. For, with intent. That's the craziness. So they was like, well, they asked the prosecutors, the defense attorney, do, do you have proof that anyone trans that, that Dr. York transported any minors? Was he in a car with anyone? No. Who did he travel with? His wife. So where was the intent when the move down? Well, people was like, well, I moved in a separate car. People were coming down south because Atlanta was, that was the beginning of the Jack the Rapper, Preaknik and all of that. And we had purchased our land. So Baba was telling us, look, I'm moving down to Georgia and this is, and I, and, and, and this is the land we're going to have. And so we have to build. So the builders came down first. It wasn't no minors or children. Nobody traveled with him. They painted a picture like he was in a car with a bunch of young, that wasn't the case. Because if you if you really look at if you looked at if you look at the trial, none of them said, "Well, I came down from upstate with Dr. York," so that went out the window. The transportation of minors, and it was a RICO charge. So all of this child molestation—that's all false. And so they hyped the case up. 
close the courts off, deny my testimony. I was the only testimony they denied. I'm being, I'm 100%. I'll argue with the judge in court. The prosecutor cross-examined me and I, and I crushed him in court because I told him like, this is what Jacob York did, dude. Ask him, bring him to court. He was involved with these, right? And then later it comes out that, yeah, after, after the trial, after Baba was sentenced, the people who lied on the stand, they didn't get what the feds